100th episode of the Cinema Snob, I had to choose something notorious, something exploitive, something epic, controversial certainly helps, and it just so happens that the movie I chose is my favorite film of all time. I'm not even kidding. My favorite film of all time is Tinto Brass's Caligula. Look, special three disc edition that I can watch all the time. And special three disc edition that I have not taken out of the packaging because I don't want dust touching my sleaze. But the best has got to be my ultra rare double vinyl Caligula soundtrack. Yes, when I want to make sweet, sweet love, I don't put in the movie. I put in Album 1, Side B. My swimmers are having a training montage in my pants. With a movie that combines the qualities of a lush, big-budget, studio, Roman epic, period piece, and the kind of exploitation that Joe D'Amato would frequently get sued over, there is no other large-scale piece of high-quality smut exploitation that I could possibly choose over Bob Guccione's Ode to Paganism. And it breaks my heart to snob this movie. All right, let's do this. All right, let's go make fun of my favorite movie of all time. This is fucking Caligula. A big budget mainstream porno film that screwed its way into worldwide cinemas throughout the late 70s and early 80s. A movie to satisfy the tastes of audiences craving the finest in bestiality and the finest in Shakespearean actors. It's like tracking down Laurence Olivier and asking him to perform the aristocrats joke. But unless you know a little bit about Roman history, odds are you're not even going to get what the title of the movie even means. So let's start with that question. Who in the hell was Caligula? That's a very good question. Actually, it turns out that Caligula was the third Roman emperor. The name Caligula actually means little soldier's boot. Now, I personally would never name anyone after a little soldier's boot. That's just fucking stupid. Though I did name a child once after a toaster. His name, you might ask? Toaster. I also named a child Condom once, but he was a mistake. A tad ironic when you think about it. So everybody thought that Caligula was going to be an absolutely wonderful king. But he wasn't. He was an ass. He was cruel, extravagant, took place in several sexual perversities, <laughs> that I'm okay with. And thus, everybody said, we shouldn't have elected that guy. He is a nut. He's got to go. And so, everybody decided to get together and fire him. By killing him very badly. Rome lived happily ever after without any more problems, and the Caesar salad was officially made. That is how Santa Claus got his wings. This is that guy with the glasses saying, why the hell was I here? <laughs> Thank you. And I know exactly why you were there. It's so I don't have to sit here anymore and talk about thespian porn.
God damn it. <laughs> Bring on the Roman titties. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean pagan Roman titties. Okay, it's two words and two dates. I think I'm done with this title card now. Oh, yes, that's what I want to see in front of a sex film. Fucking scripture! You know, just because you add a Bible verse to the beginning of something doesn't automatically make it classy. If that were the case, I'd start out all of my episodes like this. See? You get the point. Now let's get back to the fucking movie. Oh shit, it's still at the fucking Bible verse? This verse is on screen so long that I could probably gain enough wealth for its meaning to apply to me. After literally one minute of screen time, the title cards cut out. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. No! 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 I know the reputation of this movie. If I want to see sheep fucking, I'll stick with everything you always wanted to know about sex, but were afraid to ask. Thank you very much. Oh, so the sheep aren't really part of the scene? Way to scare my dick, asshole. That's not being a cock tease. That's being a cock rapist. So in this first scene, we see Malcolm McDowell as Caligula frolicking with some girl set to the music of... Wait a minute. I know that tune. That's Adagio from the Spartacus Ballet. I guess this is appropriate for those leaving the ballet feeling deprived of sheep and vagina. This looks like they're interpreting what God did when he rested on the seventh day. I'm really glad these two are happy, but I don't know why. Given that this movie was filmed in the 70s, and that's Malcolm McDowell, I can only assume this sequence is going to end with rape. Oh, never mind, the scene just ends. Just cuts away to a Roman coin on its period. What kind of opening sequence is that? That just feels like some kind of light-hearted sex romp from the early 90s. Tonight on Softly from Cable, we're spotlighting a cautionary tale of greed, lust, and debauchery in ancient Rome. So you may want to cork your asses, because this fist is getting all larded up. Really? We're really doing Caligula on this show. It's a classic, Shannon. Yeah, but I don't think I want to meet the people who get a hard-on from looking at my rack and then finish off to two chicks urinating on a corpse. This is Cinemax, Shannon. We're only showing the R-rated version. <laughs> oh, great. So now I just have to worry about the people who are so desperate to leave and watch the R version of Caligula. After Caligula introduces himself in narration, we cue in more lifted ballet music. This piece is from Romeo and Juliet, which is a lot like Caligula if you replaced Juliet with two lesbians and Romeo with a puddle of urine. What the hell does adapted from an original screenplay mean? Adapted from a screenplay that was probably much better than this film? That's all I can figure. It's funny when a movie is a remake of an original script that wasn't even turned into a movie. Caligula and his lover Drusilla go about frolicking in their bedroom, probably because the smell of the sheep feces got to be too heavy. He's disgusting. He's not. He's only large. Holy crap, her vagina is very poorly dubbed. Drusilla immediately has to hide when they are interrupted by Macro, the head of the Praetorian Guard. But things get awkward when Macro clearly notices Drusilla. How is Enya? My wife lives only for the day she can see you again, Prince. Caligula's a bastard. I know I hate it when other people cheat on my wife. Caligula has gotten the message to meet with his dying grandfather, Emperor Tiberius, on the island of Capri. 
okay, okay. When you have a shot that is primarily made of cock, are these statues really necessary? I'd like to think that this is just how Malcolm McDowell gets transported everywhere. Shit, if transportation like that was in my contract, even I would be in fucking Tank Girl. Caligula is led through the halls of Capri, where the off-camera extras seem to be going through more torture than the audience. Seven of my colleagues in the Senate have been put to death for treason. Nine, to be exact. Five of them cheated. They killed themselves. That wasn't playing fair. I think we're just overhearing the producer's S&M session. Caligula! Wow, so if Peter O'Toole's liver could take human form, this is probably what it would look like. When the camera isn't randomly cutting to cocks and vaginas for no reason whatsoever, we see that Peter O'Toole is the Emperor Tiberius, and is enjoying an afternoon in the swimming pool with his little fishes. No, seriously, that's what he calls his naked mascots in this film. His little fishes. What, you want to see some more? Let's look at this other clip. Oh, dear little fishes, drink with me. Mm. Do my little fishes please you, Nero? See? Boy, the quality of the movie sure is shit decreased. Hey, dipshit, that's not Caligula. That's Bruno Matai's Caligula reincarnated as Nero. It's one part movie, two parts stock footage, and just a teaspoon of liquefied methane. Just a teaspoon? We don't want the movie to make the audience sick. Too late. Oh, oh, oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> The Peter O'Toole performance in this movie is really weird and unlike anything I've seen in my life. Sure, you've seen plenty of drunk performances in your days, but this is the kind of rare acting you get when you chain smoke marijuana and chug a barrel full of Johnny Walker. Ah, oh, dance with me. Delight me. Dance! I assume that back in those days, O'Toole himself just made people dance that crazy dance. Okay, okay, just because there's an organ on the soundtrack doesn't mean you actually have to show us an organ! Since Tiberius' robe is soaked with the finest in Roman vodka, he changes clothes. Well, that's a ridiculous magic trick. You can do anything behind those curtains if you just randomly cut to an extra's penis. I think my favorite O'Toole parts in this movie are when he just yells for no reason whatsoever. Help! Help! Run! Was he talking to the actors or his on-set assistant? Either way, it awkwardly made it into the movie. You are a god, Lord. <laughs> No, I'm not. Not even when I am dead. Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar, they are gods. <laughs> yes, they were gods, and they also had better movies made about them. Well, what's a day of binge acting without a little slapstick? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting how this movie turns Claudius into Fatty Arbuckle. Okay, before I go any further into Tiberius' grotto here, let's just see how many tits and cocks I have to black box from this blurry still shot. Oh good, it sounded like I got an extra life there. Just like I'm sure that another life was created in the filming of that shot. Tiberius and Caligula catch one of the guards drunk on the job. And let's just say it's a little more graphic than if this were to happen to Homer Simpson. What the hell is this lady smirking for? That's nice when you get judged by someone whose job it is to get titty fucked by a wooden cock all day long. What follows is a sequence where Tiberius takes Caligula on a tour of his palace of nymphomaniacs. And there is so much here that I can't show. So, so much that I can't show. So don't get mad at me if I can't show you the hermaphrodite with a penis growing out of her vagina. 
because apparently that's how that works. More conviction! <laughs> yes, more conviction. For those of you who don't know, that's Tiberius telling them not to start fucking, but to fuck harder. Oh, now you can't stick an entire pole up there. Can you really make a feather wheel like that? You know, a Roman sex swing looks like a really inconvenient way to get a blowjob. Is that... Is that a fucking snake? And every now and then it just cuts to the Chicago Bulls mascot out of nowhere. Given that his horns are in plain sight, I am a little terrified to ask what's going on behind that curtain. Are they fucking line dancing up there? If you think that's weird, wait till it gets to the literally freaky section. What's this, a guy with four legs? That could come in handy if you really have a gooch fetish. Ugh, four-handed freaks? Oh, great, so I can get a hand job while getting my belly rubbed with the same arm. Oh, three-eyed lady? Could come in handy if you need one eyeball to stare at each individual tit from Total Recall. Oh yeah, and it also shows a man with an ass on his stomach getting a rim job. Just in case you're a shit-eater who complains that your feces doesn't have enough lint in it. Oh, thank God, we're back at the torture scene. Have you given him more wine? What the hell? I meant a glass of wine. What in Jupiter's name are you doing to this man? <laughs> Must have been a good year. Greeting, Cinema Snob! The hell? It is I, Caligula, fourth emperor of Rome. I have just come from nominating my horse's senator, and my horse's cock is the head of the Praetorian Guard. Yes, they laughed at my ideas, but let's see them laugh when I'm balls deep inside their wives. All of them I will turn into Rome's most expensive of whores. No, no, please. I want to see where you're going with this. Uh, uh, bow down before me! I am every man as I am no man, and so therefore I am a god! Uh, watch as I make sweet love to both my sister and my prostitute wife, who um, used to have sex for money, you know? Okay, so you expect me to believe that Caligula, who died in the year 41 AD, has resurrected in modern times only to acquire technology to hack directly into my video feed. I am Caligula! I have been reincarnated several times. Once as Nero, and again as Hitler. Um, my console's name is Longinus. Um, it's probably a very good joke in there somewhere, but I'm a little rusty. My speechwriters have been dead for nearly 2,000 years. Dude, your green screen just went out. I can see it right behind you. You're not even trying. You could have picked, I don't know, a park or some kind of tree to stand in front of? Trees. Ah, I've ordered them all chopped down to provide massive stilts for the naked and well hung. What? Uh, okay, I give up. I got nothing else, man. How have you been, Spoony? Been doing pretty well. I did my Deadliest Warrior not long ago, and I've been killing time since then watching some Beastmaster movies. Mark Singer. That's a way to kill an afternoon. I want to get a bunch of ferrets so I can, like, have them steal shit and bring it to me. <laughs> Don't we all? So, how have you been? I watch porn for a living. Well, have fun with that. Um, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go put on my Bi Beast costume and go interrupt Linkara's video. See ya, buddy. Now that the guard torturing and the stilted sex party are over with, we can finally get down to some Roman business. I, Tiberius Caesar, command in the name of the Senate and the people of Rome. <laughs> I think we've just seen the first of many drunk Tiberius blackout faces. The Senate is the natural enemy of any Caesar little boots. Remember that. Traitors, look at them. Oh, that's how I want to go out. I want to have my body wrapped in a cocoon by the spider from the end of Stephen King's It. And your sister, Drusilla. My sister is my sister. I know everything that is said and done. <laughs> yeah, 
as sister. It, wait a minute. Sister? Drusilla? That girl from earlier in the movie? Ew. You know, you could have established earlier in the movie that that's his fucking sister. I wish I had known that the sequence I've beat off to three times now is fucking incest porn. And yet, so far, it's the most normal thing in this fucking movie. Tiberius introduces to the movie Caligula's cousin Gemellus, or Michael Sarah. I am your grandson too, Caesar. By adoption. This is the last flesh of my flesh. Ha! My grandfather used to say the same thing to me every Thanksgiving. Brother kills a brother. Was killed his father. Was killed his son. Fate. Wait, 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 wait. Take that back a bit. Ha! Fourth wall breaking. Busted. He's so fucking blitzed right now. I'm not sure he knows that he's in a fucking movie. The scene after this is really confusing. We cut to Caligula in bed with his sister. But he left his sister in Rome, and you can tell that this is the same set from earlier in the movie, so he made the trip back to snuggle with his sister, even though one minute later he's back in Capri, shaving his beard because he has become a man, except that in the opening scene his beard was shaved. If you ask me, this movie is as hastily put together as Stomach Ass Man. Though I guess there's some important stuff in these scenes. We find out that Caligula is afraid of ravens, I guess because they can hum Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Also, it looks like Macro's wife, Enya, did incredibly well at her Cleopatra auditions. Disaster strikes when Tiberius' oldest friend, Nerva, played by Sir Why the Hell Is He In This, has slashed his own wrists and lays dying. You will respect my friend always, won't you, reptile? I've always respected him, Lord. Well, that's because you have yet to see his cameo in Arthur II on the rocks. At least this means that Tiberius can give his friend one more drunk face. You're cruel! No. Oh, great. That puke is really going to infect his wrist wounds. Wonder Twin Powers, deactivate, old friend. After Tiberius leaves, Caligula takes this as a golden opportunity to get second-hand knowledge of the afterlife. Do you see her? Who? The goddess, Isis. So you're one of those who believe... Do you see her? No. Wait, wait, I see her. She's standing on a cliff, and now she's flying through the air and using her powers against a crooked real estate agent. So the next morning at Capri... Greeting, cinema snob! I am Caligula! I invented a machine that decapitates Roman traitors and feeds their balls to the palace dogs! For I am the descendant of the god Jupiter, an offspring of... Spoody beat you to it. Aw, oh, fuck my cock! The next morning at Capri... Wait a minute, was that a fucking rooster I just heard? What are they, next to Old McDonald's farm? Doesn't this movie already have enough cock? Caligula stands and watches over slaves bathing in blood while thinking about what possibly goes on in Mel Gibson's onset trailers. He then gets word of Tiberius' continuing frailty. How long will he last? Well, it could happen any moment. But with care, he might last a year or so. Well, if Fred Penner says he could last a year, then we better get on this and kill him right away. At first, Caligula thinks Tiberius is dead, prompting him to remove the Imperial Ring with more unnecessary slapstick. <laughs> After Tiberius wakes up, Macro comes in to finish the job. And you know Macro is the one that Caligula can trust, since Macro has already promised his wife to Caligula, and he went through the Mr. Joshua fire test of loyalty. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that in Roman times, mesh worked like plastic. I know it's around his throat, too, but this still looks hilarious. Jamelis, we are alone. We must love each other. You will be the first one that I fist. 
Caligula is sworn in during a simultaneous inauguration and funeral ceremony. Ha! Jesus, even in death he makes the drunk face. <laughs> I don't like this dream. In fact, I consider it to be a nightmare. You know, like Nightmare on Elm Street 5? Not because that movie is about nightmares, but because that movie also sucks. Caligula takes the stage for his big speech to the masses. At the... Ah, <clears throat> oh, great. He's already fucked it up. You may have freed the stomach-ass slaves, but everyone is gonna remember the speech cough. Caligula asks Drusilla to bring out an onion to give the impression he's crying, as if remembering any of the imagery in this film isn't enough to make him cry. When our beloved Tiberius was dying... From the Tiber with Tiberius! Yeah! Bring Conan back! Caesar, Caligula. Sick, place down there. I mean, consul. <laughs> you know, it's funny when you see one historical piece that paints Claudius in a noble light, and another which paints him like a hybrid of both Laurel and Hardy. I'm just happy I get to watch one whole scene that I don't have to black box. Well, I guess I could put in a black box just for the hell of it. Stop! Look, I don't know how this is possible, but I've just received a video message from the Bi Beast. All of Earth is approximately 60 seconds left until we're all blown right into the moons of Jupiter. And well, before we die, there's something I always wanted to say to you. Okay, what? I like your old set better. Me too. Immediately, Caligula's paranoia begins to set in as he devises a master plan to get rid of Macro. Uh, but Caesar, that's not possible. All things that happen are possible, Longinus. Make the impossible happen and it will be possible. I'm sorry, his name is what? Longinus, you here. He here, Caesar. Longinus? Oh, that's perfect. Longinus, why don't you come stand here next to Clitzia and Testicles? Caligula gets Jamelis to rat out Father Karras from the Exorcist, thus making Kyria the new head of the Praetorian Guard. Wait a minute, I know this guy. Why does the word Mangia come to my mind? Mangia! Uh, because this movie isn't gross enough, it needs a direct link with Sallow. Well, as long as we keep feces and the mouths of children away from this guy, we should be fine. With Macro gone, Caligula seizes the opportunity to be rid of Enya, after taking a leak first. I would yell about that being completely unnecessary, but I've taken five craps in my pants since I started watching this movie. The smell overrides the foul stench coming from this movie. Kyria, she's to be banished. I love you. Uh, to Gaul. Banishment? Just banishment? Well, she's getting off easy, and believe me, in Caligula, getting off easy is no easy task. With Enya gone, Caligula is reminded by his sister that he still needs to find a suitable wife. Yes. During this movie, I've seen sex toys hammered into women's vaginas. The incest? is not shocking me anymore. Drusilla brings Caligula to the Temple of Isis, which is being run by penthouse pets, apparently. The decision to pick a queen becomes rather easy, because the queen is actually there. Helen Mirren contains so much hotness that she can even spring a boner in Caligula. Oh no, not Sezonia. She's the most promiscuous woman in Rome. The most promiscuous woman in Rome? That's kind of like saying the cheapest hooker in Vegas. Expensive, cheap, either way, you're leaving this town with genital warts. 
Before the two can even exchange words with each other, they must go through the imperial tradition of cutting the lady's neck and sucking her blood? What the fuck, is this a vampire movie all of a sudden? And that looked to be a really rusty knife. I do not want to know what that blood tastes like. Hello, and on this Brad Tries, we're doing blood. That's right, just blood. Blood. Energy drink. Gives you up to four hours of energy, and as it says here, is perfect for both humans and vampires. Nowadays, that's kind of a redundant thing to say. <laughs> but, this isn't just any old blood. No, no. It takes some preparation. First, you twist off the blood cap. Then you pour the blood into a microwave-safe cup. Microwave on high for 14 seconds, which feels like a long time when you're waiting for some delicious blood. And once you hear that ring, take your blood out and prepare to serve. And now we're ready to have some blood. It's okay, but why does it have to be warm? Why does it have to be heated up? It'd be like if I went and heated up a thing of Hawaiian punch. What's the point of that? This would be alright if it was cold. And it does have a weird bone marrow aftertaste. This is the kind of blood that Dracula 2000 would drink. This is actually kind of a sexy love scene, which is a rare feat in this movie. I actually feel like I should... Oh, what the fuck? Head chopping? That's what you're cutting to? That machine did not exist! Instead of an engagement ring, Sazonia gets a rope around her neck. That's rather sexist there, movie. Longina, Caesar. Will you stop calling him that? Everyone has fun throwing fruit at Macro's head and the plaster heads that mostly make up this field. Is the twist of this movie that everyone is super tiny and it takes place in someone's backyard with that machine being the lawnmower? Because that would make this movie kind of genius. Otherwise, that machine's involvement with this movie is really fucking stupid. Hey, Cinema Snob. Uh, hi? I'm Caligula. Okay. Is that all? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Just, but, you know, I'm Caligula and all. No funny jokes or anything? Funny jokes? What funny jokes? You're talking to the fourth Roman Emperor. Isn't that impressive enough as it is? <laughs> Why do I have to make you laugh, you putz? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> nice meeting you, Caligula. Yeah, see ya. Now with Caligula's engagement, he must spread the love to everyone he knows, so they attend the wedding of Roman guard Proculus. I think that penis cake has been delivered to the wrong wedding, because clearly it should go to penis hair from Last Airbender. But all of this is just a setup for the worst wedding gift ever. I thought you didn't like virgins. I've never known any. That is correct, Sazonia. <laughs> because my wife is a whore. Okay, in a movie of notorious scenes, this may actually be the most notorious scene. It's hard for me to actually break this scene down comedically, so I'll just show you this. <laughs> and this. <laughs> and this. Scene! Trivia note, McDowell actually ad-libbed the bit with the flower, and it is kind of amazing watching the gears work in his head, as it hits him to do that to this actor. I think it was right about here. Yep, that's the look of a man who has the bright idea to stick a flower in a guy's ass. And that's where we leave off with Caligula for today. With the fisting scene! Yep, fisting. If that doesn't bring people back for the second part of the episode, nothing will. In fact, I'll just spoil it for you right now. Proculus the Fisty dies in the second part. 
So if you liked the fisting scene and you want to see more, stay tuned. I wonder what I should wear. Hello and welcome to the Radio Drome. On this episode, we'll be recapping the previous episode of the Cinema Snob. Yeah, you may remember that Brad had to psych himself into snob mode. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I love you, I love you, I love you. The snob was interrupted by various fake Caligulas. I think the snob's wife's rack was in there somewhere. Oh yeah, and there was fisting. <laughs> and there was the snob making comedy out of controversial Roman shenanigans. Hee hee hee, that's so gross. I'm gonna make a funny joke about that now. So without further delay, here is the second part of Caligula, complete with an opening credit sequence reenactment. I have existed for three years, and I shall exist for another three years. Although I have taken the form of the cinema snob, I am all critics as I am no critic, and so I am, uh, the cinema snob. For more, I see. I guess the ass stomachs and fisting weren't enough for you. You had to come back and see if the movie still holds up with even more urine. See? Look at that. That's a lot of fucking urine. Oh wait, sorry, it's just Caligula needlessly dancing in the rain. This whole sequence was actually conceived of by Malcolm McDowell himself, and lo and behold, it actually made it into the movie. What was that thought process like? Was Malcolm just thinking to himself, you know, this movie has got penis cakes, little fishes, and a head chopping machine. I got a naked dance in this thing. Jamelis! I saw him! He ran away! He wants me dead! Ah. Oh, never mind. That's not Caligula. That's just Malcolm McDowell cracking. The only thing to calm Caligula down in this situation is a threesome with his wife and sister. You know, sometimes I hate being an only child. Oh shit, someone is spying on them. Who could it be? A member of the Senate? A couple of guards? Someone else who could use this against him? Ah, oh, it's two lesbians. Two lesbians who have yet to actually have a speaking line in this movie. Here's where some fun backstory on the film comes in. The movie was originally written by Gore Vidal, who backed out of the project when director Tinto Brass changed the vision of the film to appear more like a political satire. Tinto Brass then had his name taken off the director credit because of about 10 minutes of post-production porno footage shot by Bob Guccione and inserted into the film. That's where this scene comes from. Pointless sexy porno shot by Penthouse Magazine and inserted into a movie that is not supposed to be sexy. Why don't you just throw an oral sex scene into Cannibal Holocaust? We don't want the people at that screening leaving without a steel heart on. I personally find it funny that the writer of the film left, the director of the film left, and the movie was released to audiences who at this point in the movie mostly left. Okay, enough of this scene. It's interrupting the fucking movie. I know I hate it when I get interrupted. Roman cameo! God damn it! Caligula holds a dinner for his family and friends to, I guess, celebrate his hiring of professional plate spinners? 
I'm sorry, is Claudius now being played by Divine? Am I going to expect shit-eating in the near future? Mostly, though, the dinner is Caligula's plan to get rid of his cousin Jamelis. You took an antidote before coming to my table, which is tantamount to accusing me of poisoning you. That is logic! Is it not? Caligula! Don't worry, Jamelis. Once the fist goes all the way in, you won't even feel the arm. But Caligula's new image of paranoia begins to upset Drusilla. He's not even your heir. Sazonia now carries your child. Oh, have we not established that yet? Anyway, yeah, Sazonia is now pregnant. Dance! Dance? Yes. And what about your son? Show incitatus your new dance. Yes, if there's one thing you must do when pregnant with a large porcelain bull, it's dance. Wait, wait, she's dancing for the horse, remember? That's not what the horse wants to hear. Hello, I'm Mr. Red. A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Red. As if Caligula doesn't have enough issues fucking with his brain, he comes down with a fever during his karate lessons, apparently. Ew! Is this movie in 3D all of a sudden? Either that or Caligula is now being haunted by the ghost of Tiberius's drunk face. <laughs> Feverish and out of his fucking mind, Caligula calls his doctor to his bedside and... Uh... Well, you know, if you make someone dance to please your horse, the horse is gonna have to put out. I'm just saying. How embarrassing. Don't you hate it when you accidentally confuse a loved one with a horse? The real Drusilla comes rushing in to tend to the ailing Caligula. Dude, whatever you do, don't tell her that you confused her with your horse! Long Janus, I want Long Janus. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say anything. Sizonia then overhears Kyria and other members of Caligula's cabinet, hoping for the death of Caligula. But they still try to kiss his ass. I offer my life if Jupiter will only spare our beloved emperor. Jupiter accepts your offer. Hmm? Interesting. Was that whole illness just a master plan to get rid of John Goodman? Instantly, Caligula feels better and returns to work. I I'm sorry, wait, is that a fucking basketball? Ah, yes, I love Roman basketball. That's the game where not clearing the ball means that you sodomize someone without permission. And yet that still gets you three points. This is just one of the many glaring flubs in this historical drama, be it the basketball or the modern map of Europe that pops up in the background. Not to mention the fact that nearly every penis in this movie is circumcised, something that was not practiced at the time by the Romans. But that one I can kind of understand. Do you want to pay the extra batter money for an uncircumcised penis cake? So back to Caligula's work, which must be take your torture to work day, because that's all he's doing here, torturing Proculus. You're an honest man, Proculus, which means a bad Roman. Therefore, you're a traitor. <laughs> Logical. Hmm? You know, that actually makes sense to me. You know, for old time's sake, why not throw a little lard on that knife? Caligula instructs the torturer to make Proculus die a slow death, which... Oh, thank God, I was just thinking that this scene needed two sexy lesbians. Hang on a sec. Hello, Blip. Yeah, I'm just wondering if I can show two lesbians urinate on a corpse. 
What does it matter how long the corpse has been dead? How did you know I was watching Caligula? You're watching it too? I know, it's fucked up, right? <laughs> so can I show that? They hung up. Guess they want to see how the scene ends. It's with castration! Longinus. Reptile. Cut off those and send them to Livia. Yes, that's what I want. To have balls delivered to my house by a guy named Longinus. That's better than what happens to the shaft. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, no, 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 no. It's bacon! Interesting, too, how the dicks seem to be erect. This movie has so many hard-ons, I'm surprised the VHS wasn't in a clamshell. Hey, it's Vic, your big box Caesar. And while it's true Caligula was never released in a big box or in a clamshell, the same can't be said for its Joe D'Amato counterpart, Emperor Caligula, the untold story, which was released through Transworld Media, the company responsible for giving us the D'Amato-less air to a film, Robert Ginty Revenge Plotation, and a slew of truly classy martial arts films. Caligula the Untold Story went for the reasonable price of $69.95, which is a small price to pay to see a spear shoved up a guy's ass. And the movie finally gives us the true story of how Caligula fell immensely in love with revenge-seeking voodoo priestess Laura Gemser and was actually killed on the beach with an arrow to his chest. Let's open up that clamshell there, sweetheart. It's interesting to note that all the hip kids on the street just simply refer to this movie as the Emperor. This is Big Box Vic saying that if you want to see an untold story of history, rent a film that just makes shit up. But only in Caligula can a cock chopping scene lead to childbirth. All right, let me get this straight. We only recently found out that Sezonia is pregnant, and now she's giving birth? So you're telling me that in the past nine months, the only significant thing Caligula did to make it into this biopic is watch two porn stars piss away their career? Caligula, hoping for a son to become his heir, is distraught when Sezonia gives birth to a daughter. Well, at least she won't be eligible to play Roman basketball now. To celebrate the birth of my son. My son. Julia! Drusilla! What is this, reverse sleepaway camp all of a sudden? Jesus, you're supposed to reveal that twist at the end of the movie. It's during the birthing scene that Drusilla herself now becomes sick with the fever. Well, that's the last time I try to comfort a sick man in bed with his horse. Drusilla struggles to stay alive as she's being cared for by the doctor, who has yet to actually do anything in this movie except watch people get sick. But once she dies, Caligula has his own method of curing her disease, by licking her corpse. Unfortunately, you cannot lick something to bring it back to life. <laughs> Believe me, I know. She's a beg you. That marks the second time that ISIS has been cancelled. I may be making jokes here, but believe it or not, in everything that has happened in this movie, in every moment of horrific violence and stomach-churning perversions, this scene is actually kind of moving. No! She was my favorite brother fucker. With Caligula's sister gone, he takes this as an opportunity to find out just what Roman life is like outside of the palace. And it's mostly made up of people relieving themselves on the side of the road. I had no idea that pagan Rome was exactly like New Berlin, Illinois. What the hell is this? Did this guy just come wandering in from the Roman basketball stadium? Fucking shaft heads. I've come so far in this movie that I now firmly believe that the Romans wore styrofoam cocks on their heads. How dare you, cinema snob! The fuck are you talking about? Don't you! Dare Nick Phillips me, I know what you did here. You hired all these Caligula impersonators, but you forgot the most important one. One that actually speaks with a British accent. Me! I didn't hire those people to impersonate Caligula. Of course not, you hired them for free, didn't you? Doesn't matter, it's not like I wanted to stick my lined up hand up someone's ass. I don't want you to do that either! 
Well, that's good then, because the only one you're getting from me is the one that stars Sylvester Stallone. Really? A fist reference? Toodles, you fucking baked potato. With Caligula gone, Sezoni and Longinus ponder the whereabouts of their emperor. He could be anywhere. No. He's here, in Rome. He's testing us. Yes, he's testing you by performing magic tricks in an underground prison. This, by the way, is Caligula's new friend, the Giant. Yes, the Giant. A giant who is technically shorter than Caligula. George Morrison, this guy is not. But at least he has Caligula's back when Caligula declares himself to be a god. I have existed from the morning of the world, and I shall exist until the last star falls from the night. Although I have taken the form of Caius Caligula, I am all men as I am no man, and therefore I am... a god. This has been bugging me throughout the entire movie. Why is everyone referring to him as Caius when his name in reality was Gaius? They even go so far as to spell it with a fucking C. When you look at the behind-the-scenes footage for the film, the actors correctly pronounce it as Gaius, as in this pre-dubbed clip. Although I have taken the form of Gaius Caligula, I am all men as I am no man! But somewhere between production and post-production, they said to themselves, Yeah, we know his name is Gaius, but why not name him after Caius Cassius from Julius Caesar? What? John Gielgud was in that movie, too! Let's see how the Senate decides to vote on Caligula's god status. I. 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 The period of mourning is now over. He's mad. Really? What was your first clue? Was it the head chopping lawnmower? Was it having a man's balls sent to his wife? Oh, no, no. It's when he made the Senate. Bah! Now that Caligula is a god, it's time for him to do godly things. Though I think his god status is about as questionable as Arnold's in Hercules in New York. Who are the richest men in Rome? Who? Answer. The pimps? Mm, this is true. The pimps are quite popular in Rome. To solve all of Rome's financial problems, Caligula has the bright idea to whore out the senator's wives in an imperial brothel located squarely on a solid gold ship. At the time of production, this was actually the largest single prop built for a motion picture. This. This prop. It's nice to know that the record for the largest prop went to a movie that uses it to showcase midget porn. Some of the senator's wives actually seem to be into this idea. Senator Marcellus, your wife will scare our customers away. Try hot walnuts. Oh, since when does anyone in this movie have standards? Hello, ass stomach man! I think that the characters here can handle hairy nipples. And what does try hot walnuts mean? Look around you, this scene has no shortage of nuts. While Caligula's voice is hastily dubbed over post-production porn, we see him pop in from time to time to taunt his men. Kyria, I hear you have a taste for little boys. Is that not so? No, she's a big boys. <laughs> oh, nice. Make a pedophilia joke to the guy who starred in Sallow. I'll have to work out a special rate for you. <laughs> in case you've forgotten, my wife's vagina is frequently for sale. Well, with the ship already containing plenty of Moby Dicks, it's time to get this puppy moving. <laughs> I'm sorry, is this a fucking musical all of a sudden? Also, I think the giant is trying to walk off with one of the props. Hello there, I'm the Cinema Snob. Yes, THE Cinema Snob. Here to ponder why a movie that features both vampires and Robocop can somehow be worse than Robocop 3.
I'll stick with real robot movies like Metropolis, thank you very much. <laughs> well, that's trippy. What the hell is going on here? Oh, just a... Wait a minute. Why are you dressed like the cinema snob? I am the cinema snob! No, no, no. You're supposed to be dressed as Caligula. They told me that you'd be dressed as Caligula, and then I'd interrupt your video dressed as... Well, you. Who the fuck is they? And why would I be dressed up as Caligula? You're reviewing it, aren't you? Well, yeah, but I don't dress up like the characters I'm reviewing. If I did that, I'd be in jail or dead. Well, that's just perfect. My first time cameoing in one of your episodes, and they fucked me over. They completely fucked me over. I still don't know who they is. You know, the movie They. It talks to me. Uh, great. Well, that's not creepy. Well, look at it this way. You could have it worse than cameoing. You could actually have to watch the film. Are you kidding? I love Caligula. If only all of Rome had just one neck. Caligula's devious plan is to conquer Britain. And by conquering Britain, I mean he marches a few hours outside of Rome and has his naked soldiers attack a field of papyrus cane. Yes, now that we're done witnessing Liberace's wet dream, can we please get back to the movie? When no one actually believes that Caligula set foot in Britain, he orders Kyria to have senatorial Roman traitors arrested. Personally, I just like listening to the names of the senators being read off. They have failed me. Marcus, arrest them. Lepidus, Sextus. No, not Sextus. As if this movie didn't seem to skip over large chunks of story to begin with, the last act here is really, really thrown together by attaching random pieces of film to random dubs of dialogue. We have this scene where Kyrie and the others stand around talking about killing Caligula, but mostly their mouths are muffled, such as this earlier similar scene where their voices are just heard off camera. It's almost like these scenes were created entirely in the editing room. Hey, whatever makes room for the lesbians. I guess things can get a little screwed up when you film a movie in 76 and release it to the U.S. in 1980. Hey, snob, 80s Dan here. And you're right. While Caligula was released in most countries in 1979, it did have an 80s release here in the United States. It's not a real fucking character. What? What? No, no, no. What? What are you talking about? I, I'm, I'm real. I, I'm, I'm real. Well, that was disturbing. Personally, I don't know where this scene was supposed to fit in. I need you. No, don't lick him. He's not dead yet. The movie comes full circle when Caligula is no longer afraid of ravens. Wait, was that actually an arc in this movie? Or was it just made to dissolve into the raven on Kyria's chest, the man who was about to kill Caligula? Now that is one huge bit of symbolism. I said that that is one huge bit of symbolism. Okay. I guess Film Brain used all his satellite power to call me a baked potato. We see Caligula's son daughter for the first time since the birthing scene, and she looks pretty big for a 30 minute year old. I say 30 minute year old because I refuse to believe that between this scene and the birth scene, three fucking years have passed in this movie. I've grown so attached to these characters that I don't think I can see them die. Seriously, how can I break down a death scene of characters that I've spent so long talking about? It's like I'm going through the Stockholm Syndrome of movie reviewing. Please, please, just someone else talk about this. Greetings, Kung Tai Ted here to talk about the death of one of the most evil rulers in world history. Remember that just because you are leisurely taking a walk along the courtyard with your family does not take away from the fact that you are a sadistic tyrant and your people probably want you dead. They could be whispering about how jealous they are that you bagged Helen Mirren or about how you only have a few minutes left to live. When approaching a large man carrying a sword, it's probably best not to say this word. Scrotum. It will make him want to stab you. 
After being bitch slapped with a sword, your wife may come to rescue you with her hotness, but it's likely a sword can pierce through that too. The torturer uses the post-birth abortion technique to wipe out your daughter. And the guard plays Bend It Like Beckham with the severed head of your giant. But you're not out of the wilderness yet, as the soldiers play human shish kebab with your recently deceased corpse. To take away even more of your dignity, your body is given the Gerald Ford maneuver of collapsing down the stairs. And that is the true story of the death of Caligula, minus everything I just said. This is Kung Tai Ted saying, what's a political assassination without a white horse? Thank you, Ted. Glad your knee healed up. Anyway, that's Caligula. Talk about a happy ending, and what? You leave it on that fucking freeze frame for the ending credits? Oh yes, there's nothing like leaving the theater with the cool, dead eyes of a murderous psychopath staring blood-soaked daggers into your backside. Oddly enough, despite how lowly regarded this movie is nowadays, it was a modest hit at the time of release. The movie broke even domestically with its $30 million budget, due largely in part to producer Bob Guccione doubling the ticket prices at selected theaters. So the movie was a hit in the same way that some current 3D movies consider themselves a hit. But aside from its box office receipts, the film was a huge hit on videotape, and to this day remains Penthouse's highest selling video. Most video stores stocked this film in the porn section, which begs the question, who in the hell would go to rent erotica and walk out with this sick fucking shit? <laughs> So did they have it? It was right where you said it would be, in the porn section behind the revolving doors. I told you it would be there. Yeah, but who expects a movie with Sir John Gielgud to be right there on the shelf between Candy Stripers and Clint Eastwood and Squirty Mary? Wait, what's that other movie you got? Oh, The Best of Donald Duck. Why? Dude, I didn't want the clerk to think I was a pervert. I rented a porn along with the kids movie, that way he won't think all I watch is porn. Dude, you rented a children's movie with porn. That makes you look worse. How? For all that clerk knows, the cartoon is just foreplay. Like you're gonna show some kid a cartoon as an appetizer for porn. At least I rented it. You didn't even go into the video store. I can't go in that video store anymore. Why? A couple years back, I got caught jerking off in the porn section. <laughs> Dude! The movie didn't fare well with critics either, which is as big of an understatement as saying Norbit didn't fare well with shame. Some critics dismissed it as a laughable relic of a failed effort to bring explicit sex movies to the masses, or a sublimely ridiculous thesp-filled porno togarama. But my favorite has to be from Roger Ebert, who stated, This movie, said the lady in front of me at the drinking fountain, is the worst piece of shit I've ever seen. So you see, don't go see this movie because the lady in front of Roger Ebert at the drinking fountain said that it sucked. And I hold her opinion in a high regard. But the movie is mostly a lot of sex and violence. It's not like it's so controversial to where it's actually going to hurt anyone. Oh yeah? <sighs> Jesus Christ! How the hell did he end that transmission? Anyway, I'm the Cinema Snob, and thank you for sitting through 100 episodes. And believe me when I say, it was much harder for me. But stay tuned for 100 more episodes, which will include Pierre Kirby, Weasels, Cannibals, 3D Titties, Italian Aliens, and more Pierre Kirby. Now that's a tease. <laughs>
I, Caligula Caesar, command in the name of the Senate the people of Rome. I, Caligula Caesar, command in the name of the Senate the people of Rome. I, Caligula Caesar, command in the name of the Rome. I, Caligula Caesar, command in the name of the Senate the people of Rome. I, Caligula Caesar, command in the name of the Senate the people of Rome. Rome, Rome, Caesar, Caesar, Rome, Rome, rubbish, rubbish, rubbish.